Hello, good morning guys. Uh, my name is EJ and I'm back again with another video for us to take a look at and you know discuss my art process so hopefully that this could serve as a lesson of sorts for you. Um, so yeah, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a master study and I've talked about master studies before. Um, uh, generally, master study is pretty much uh, a study that you do. Um, you, you take a look at old masters and you kind of study that painting, the paintings that they've done, and kind of try to recreate it. Um, so yeah, um, I guess real quick, just to talk about who I'm studying today. Today I'm studying Fernando Amorsolo. Now Fernando Amorsolo is not very known worldwide, um, but he is very well known in my country, uh, Philippines. He is um, one of uh, the national artists of Philippines or something. Uh, something like that. I totally forgot what the distinction is. Um, but yeah, Fernando Almorzola is well known. Like everybody knows him. He was uh, he did most of his painting around the fifties, um, and uh, he did a lot of folk paintings. I, I guess you could call them folk paintings. Uh, he he reminded me a lot of Albert Bierstadt almost, uh, or like the the romantics. Um, because he did a lot of uh, countryside scenery, so it's just kind of like the one we're looking at right now. Like, this is basically like the country of the Philippines, or what you would call the province. Um, obviously, in in America, it, it would look different because you know the farm and rural area would absolutely look different than what it is in, in the painting right now. But if you look at the one on the left, you'll see that. And there's a bunch of farmers and what they're doing is like they're picking mangoes and whatnot uh, which is really a tropical fruit uh, so you'll see that a lot in the Philippines um, but yeah he does subjects like this uh, very rural settings he captures uh, the old town feel of Philippines so, you know so um, you could almost say he'd be like the Norman Rockwell of Phil of Philippines because Norman Rockwell did a lot of Americana kind of paintings like that uh, way back in the 20s. Um, so yeah, that's Fernando Omorcello. Um Look him up. He's really good. Um, he came from a family of painters and turns out that his brother and I think one of his cousins is also a painter. So there's quite a lot of artists in his family. Um, so yeah, that's Fernando Amorsolo for you. I wish I, I know more about him than what I have gleaned uh, information-wise from Wikipedia. But yeah, he's, his paintings are amazing, essentially. It reminds me of my country a lot. So, But yeah, um, Mango Pickers is the name of uh, this particular piece that I'm studying. And... Uh, I guess to talk about what my intent for this study is, um, I am reminded of what happened in the last master study I posted, which was uh, the painting by uh, Frazetta. I posted a Frazetta painting, and I talked in that video about you know studies and how you do studies and whatnot, and how Anthony Jones mentioned about how specific your studies need to be. For me, my studies really are more of like a practice for my eyes and practice for my um for me t to look at an artwork and to really see what i'm looking at um because too often as artists we have a tendency to draw from imagination or draw from you know our brain or draw what we think we're seeing instead of actually looking at something and really discerning like what's in front of us you know and and there's nothing wrong with drawing from imagination. In fact, I draw from imagination all the time. But in order for you to push the, the realism of what you're drawing, you really have to know like what it's like to do life studies and studies, period, in general. You know, to look at a painting and really be able to like recopy it or to look at life and be able to copy it as well as, you know, a master artist would. Um, so yeah, 
Um, I wanted to mention that just to do a quick recap. Um, but typically when I do my studies, I typically just use it as a practice to just study in general, you know, help me look properly in a way. But for this specific painting, I actually had a specific study in mind. And my specific study in mind for this particular piece was colors, color picking. Um, as you can see, I don't ever pick colors from the original source. You'll never ever see me move over to the left to try and color pick from there. I try as best as I can to eyeball it on my color wheel and then when I lay down some colors then I would pick color pick from my canvas itself my original canvas like right now you just saw me color pick a bunch of colors actually um, on my color canvas I'm doing it right now actually I'm color picking on my canvas but you won't see me move over to the left to what the original painting was and color pick from there um, but yeah my real exercise for this whole thing was to approximate the colors just from my eyes. So originally when I first started, um, I guess to go back and talk about what happened since I was talking about like the subject matter and the painting and the artist um, at the very beginning of the video. So I guess now I'll take the time to discuss what happened initially. What happened initially was that I, I took the painting, a copy of the painting and blur it out, um, did a Gaussian blur just so that I have some little color to start out with and technically I would call that a cheat because I didn't approximate the colors on the canvas I got the colors from the original photo itself but it's so blurred out and so generic that you know I kind of pretty much just started out almost kind of started out myself it's kind of started a cheat not really a cheat you know I don't really consider it as a cheat but almost kind of I could see someone argue for that case you know but right as soon as I did the Gaussian blur and kind of have those colors set on the canvas what I did was I color picked it or um, what I did after I did the Gaussian blur was that I created shapes the general shapes of everything that we saw you know the tree the background the figures in front and when I created those shapes I color picked those specifically from the color wheel um, and I laid down those colors and then I started my detailing process which you know uh, I started in the background which was pretty much when you know I started talking about colors <laughs> uh, and color picking um, but yeah uh, my goal really for this study was to, you know, approximate the colors of the original painting by just looking at it. And I have to tell you, it's, it, it is very, very difficult. Like, I don't know how, how, you know, art restorers and specifically people who restore art. Like, I don't know how they do it, you know, because... You get like an old artwork, say from like the 15th century, from the Renaissance period, and it's all broken down and, you know, it's all craggly and cracked and, and the colors aren't quite, you know, what it used to be. And if you have to sit there and restore it to its original state, like I have no clue how they approximate the colors. I mean, I know that they have a deep knowledge and deep historical knowledge of of the kinds of paint that existed back in the day, you know? And I'm sure they'll have those information and I'm sure they'll have information on what particular palette that a particular artist, such as Van Dyck, for example, you know, like they would have a palette review of like what he typically uses in his palette. And so, you know, like restoring art, you know, you'll have this tons of information, but I have to say, like, approximating and trying to figure out exactly what the original colors were that was used by the artist is very, very difficult. And it's very, very hard to mix. I mean, you can see in, in my painting, which is a digital painting, like, I should have had a much successful, um endeavor in trying to simulate the colors of the original but clearly i'm not you know if you look in the one on the left 
it's it's way too warm like it has the yellow tonish feel and that could probably be because of the scan i mean i'm not sure because i've never seen the original and i would love to see the original but i've never seen it but the original pick that i have has a yellowish tone well with mine like clearly mine's more greenish right and so if i was to rate this exercise like it was it i would rate this as a fail just because you know my original intent of the study was to try and simulate the colors as much as i can and i feel like i didn't even come close you know um so like i said um I guess I need to do more color studies then is because of what I'm trying to get at. Um, but nonetheless, though, it's still a good exercise because if you take a look at the whole painting and for the most part, I got the shapes down. I got the shapes right. The figures are all pretty much aligned proportionally. The lady and the guy in the back that's on top of that cow or carabao, we call them carabaos. Those three particular figures, the carabao, the guy and the lady at the think on mine I think I drew them a little bigger than the original one uh, but the four figures on the foreground they're all fairly about the same size you know uh, the lady the very front most lady seems to be a little taller than the one I drew in so that's a little off you know but shape wise everything is pretty much on par as the original um in terms of value scale i think i got it right um for the most part uh how he, fernando has his value range is almost the same as how i have my value range so um i thought that was a success um the plants in the background are pretty much you know similar in shape as the original one so i think that's a success you know but overall <laughs> when it comes to my original intent of study uh yeah it wasn't it wasn't a success because i didn't get the colors down as much uh as i had wanted to but anyways um so enough of my assessment enough about my assessment of the study uh, i guess i could talk about what i'm doing which pretty much i'm in the detailing phase and as i've mentioned before what i do with detailing is um, i delineate my shapes or i make my edges clearer um, so i go back over some of my edges and kind of just sharpen them up i accentuate the shadows if the shadows need accentuating and I add the highlights now that's my typical workflow when I'm drawing something like from my imagination or like my own original creation that's my typical workflow when I detail this one's a little bit different obviously because even though I'm doing those steps I'm really more concerned about recopying the look of the original painting so if I notice like a particular stroke in the original painting that kind of emulates you know like uh like that particular stroke like kind of recreates in a particular object or something i will try to recreate it as much as i can um so that's really about the only different thing that i do when it studies is that um i do that workflow i follow the workflow that i mentioned but i'm also much much more concerned about trying to recreate the painting as originally as I can so yeah
as you can see, I was pretty much working section by section when I was uh, doing my details. I started out in the back and, you know, did the background. And then slowly worked my way all the way to the front. Uh, so I did all the foliage in the back and then I did uh, the mid-ground figures like the guy in the carabao and, and the old lady. Um, so I did them. And then as soon as I got to the tree, you know, I tried to recreate the colors and the general look of the tree. And then obviously I started working in the figures. Um, which I'm almost done with um, the three brightmost figures. And then I'm about to start on the main character or the focal point of the painting which is the dalaga or the young woman who is in uh orange and yellow which i'm working on um so yeah um again like i said you know when i was working section by section and all this i just try to recreate everything and a thought just occurred in my head actually when i was like watching this like in hindsight i I should not have been color picking as much. I mean, if the intent of my study is to do colors, like what I really should have done was that approximate all the colors, even all the way throughout the painting would have been something that I should have done in hindsight in this painting. Because even though I, you know, approximated the colors at the very beginning of the painting, at the initial stage, at the initial blocking, and then at the initial laying down of colors, I approximated all those colors. And then after I did that, then I started color picking from the canvas. But really in hindsight, what I should have done was I could have color picked on the canvas, you know, like you see me do. But then as soon as I color pick on my own canvas, right, not, not the original painting, not color picking in the original painting, but as soon as I pick colors on my original canvas like what I should have done in hindsight was do some micro adjustments on the color wheel to try and approximate the colors that I see in the original painting like if I I, I just now realized that if I had probably done that approach I think I would have been a little bit more successful I mean I'm not really sure I need to try and recreate um, doing a study with a an intent on colors but um, judging from what I see from my own work, maybe you guys can take this as a piece of advice for when you guys do color studies. You know, you could approximate the base colors first, lay them all down in your canvas. You can color pick from your canvas if you want to, or you can try and go, you know, the super gung-ho route and just approximate all the colors from the color wheel. Um, it's up to you, but if you do pick from your own canvas uh, the colors, then I would suggest trying to do micro adjustments um, based on what color you're about to lay down because, you know, that might help you <laughs> with, you know, trying to study color because just as I, as I mentioned with this particular painting, I felt like I'm not very successful we're trying to recreate the colors. The original is too warm. Mine's too cold. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
pretty much close to finishing up um, this particular study uh, obviously <laughs> we're taking a look at the last section of the painting that is undetailed which is the focal character and um, I try to save this for last for the most part because you know it is a focal character it's the one that needs the most attention so yeah um, I focus in or I spend a lot of time on this one uh, as you can see I'm also working zoom in a lot more zoom in than I was compared to um, all the other figures that I worked on so yeah um, I'm just really trying to nail the look of the focal girl or, or the girl that's in focal point. Um, I did okay for the most part trying to recreate the general shape and general look uh, of, of the girl. The colors are off again like I mentioned but not as terrible as the rest of the foliage. Um, it's fairly spot on almost not quite some colors are a little bit more saturated than it needs to be but for the most part it's average um the only thing that i feel like i failed with you know this particular section of the painting is the bounce light on the girl's face um which i haven't really you know put so far uh in this video you'll see me put it later but Basically, I made the bounce light way brighter than it really needed to be. Um, you can see the bounce light uh, on the one on the left. Um, you know, it's there, but not quite as bright. And then now you see my bounce light, which I just put. It's actually much brighter than it needed to be. So I, I feel that that was a mistake, you know. But for the most part, it's almost as accurate as, you know, the painting on the left. So... If I had a little bit more time, I should have spent some some more time on that one uh, and trying to like fine tune that look. But for the most part, you know, I got it. So, so yeah. Uh, overall, I'm okay with this painting. My study failed, but I'm happy with the result. You know, so it's so and so. So yeah, and you can see my value check checks out. So it's pretty this much. They're pretty much the same in value. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.